Do you have an old Android tablet sitting around? Do you run Frigate in VR? Well, now you can combine those two and create a simple, easy to use live view on your Android tablet. I'll show you how. So let's get started. When looking through the Frigate in VR Reddit thread, I came across this article right here. Periscope Android 2.2 Plus Live Viewer for Frigate. So I've had some, uh, some tablets sitting around that I've not used for a long time. And one of them is my Nexus 7. This is a very old tablet, Google Nexus 7. And I don't even know what the specs are on it. It's just so old. But right now what you see is it's running a live view of my Frigate NBR and the cameras that I have connected to that Frigate NBR. So I figured when I was looking at this article, that this would be something I could use a tablet for. And so far I've been really pleased with it. So this is a thing that, or a tool, an application that was written by MAKSZ42. If we go over here to his releases page, this is the Periscope for Frigate NVR. And this is a sample picture of something he's running, I guess, with some cameras on the Frigate NVR on his tablet. Uh, what this does is it takes a, an old tablet. And again, this Nexus is super old. I, it's, I don't know, many years old. And it's um, pretty underpowered for running most things these day, but, days, but it can run this. So this shows the compatibility of Android 2.2 and up. You can also run it on Android TV, although I haven't tried that yet. I don't really have a TV to, I mean, I do I have a couple of Google TVs, I guess. I've never tried side loading anything on those, but uh, I guess it can be done. So it's super simple to set up. I will show you that here uh, right now, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna be showing you on my Tab S tablet because it's easier to screen record from that than my Nexus, but same principle applies. All right, so you're gonna to go to, actually you're gonna to go to the MAKSZ42 GitHub page. And from there, you just click on releases over on the right-hand side. And then you see two versions as of this recording, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. You're gonna get 0 0.2 and the changes there are that they allowed self-signed certificates if you're running HTTPS. And then you have some options for semi-automatic updates. You wanna download the APK file. So before you click on that, let me just tell you, if you are curious about security or you have a security issue downloading APK files, you need to own your own security. So if you don't wanna do this, don't do it. Uh, but you also can come over here on this particular app and you can look at all of the, the code and see everything you need to see to understand the security of this particular application. Uh, I don't advocate downloading random APK files and putting them on your devices, but this one gives you the option to vet that yourself and security is everyone's own responsibility. So take that as you will. All right, so if you're good with this, click on the APK file, uh, I, which I'll do here. Now I've done this already a couple of times on this, on this uh, while I was playing around with it. So you won't get the download again option. You'll get the download option. I'm going to download it again for the fun of it. And then I'm going to open this file. Now, when you do this on a device where you haven't run this before, it's likely going to ask you if you want to allow APK files to run from the browser or whatever application you're opening this APK file with. If you're using some sort of file, manager on your device, it may ask for the file manager's permission to run the APK file. So make sure again that you're comfortable with security, but if you were good to go, um, in my case, I've already installed it. It's gonna ask for me to update it. And this is good for later on if they come up with another version uh, and you wanna download it and update it, it's pretty simple to do that. So it's installing and it's all done. And once you're done and you've done the install, uh, click on open. And you're not gonna see this, you're gonna see this screen. This screen is the initial configuration screen where you need to set your protocol, whether it's HTTP, HTTPS. If you're running HTTPS, it'll give you an option to disable the certificate verification for like self-signed certificates. If you're running HTTP, you don't get that option at all. Um, that makes sense. So your host is gonna be where you're running Frigate. Now I'm running Frigate on a standalone device, which is a little mini computer. Uh, I've got my Coral TPU plugged into that. It's a little mon uh, tiny Optiplex device and it is directly accessible from my network. 
I am not running it in Home Assistant, although I do use Home Assistant for the alerting and for some other things through the Frigate proxy. So if you're running uh, the Frigate on Home Assistant device, you need to be able to get to the port it's running on and the IP address it's running on. I don't know for sure in the add-on if it allows you to open external ports, but if it does, you may need to do that. Your mileage may vary, um, but anyway, I'm running it on a standalone device. All right, so set the, po the host, which is what my standalone device is. It's a local IP. I think it will do DNS resolution as well, especially if you're using a SSL certificate on it. Port is the port that you're running it on, 5000th default. Uh, interval is how often the camera images update, currently set to a default of 1000 milliseconds. That is about one second per image update. This is not real-time streaming. Real-time streaming is a different protocol and there are, um, well, there are plans for adding that to this app, I believe it's on the, on the uh, site. So if they do add RTSP, then that will become available. RTSP is a whole different world. For a low uh, resource intensive like application like this, I'm okay with it updating once every one second, or if I want it faster, maybe once every 500 milliseconds. You can go as low as uh, 200 milliseconds uh, on this, a minimum of 200 milliseconds for updates. But it's not designed to be a like a full-fledged frigate app. It is just a live streamer that's simple to run on underpowered devices. And that's what I like about it. There is also a time on here. Uh, you can set J, uh, image format to the JPEG or WebP. As of this one, display implementations, image view or surface view. Uh, you can ignore or not ignore the aspect ratio. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Automatically check for updates. That's version 0.2 allows you to do that. I don't know what happens when there's an update because I haven't seen one yet. If you're using uh, credentials, you need to place them in here as well. If you uh, send this over HTTP, it's going to be unencrypted over your network. Keep that in mind. Again, security is your own you need to, to do what you need to do to make your stuff secure. All right, that's all the stuff you need to set on this page for now. I'm gonna go out of it with the left arrow and you'll see now what the image looks like. This is the way the thing initially sets up with four cameras, it picks four cameras at random, I guess, or I don't know, alphabetical, who knows. It puts four cameras on your screen to, as a default with uh, ignoring the aspect ratio. So everything is, all together and it's all without borders. If I come in here now and I change the aspect ratio or tell it to use the aspect ratio, then when I come back, you'll see that it's made a little bit of a change. The, the camera images are less spread out or stretched and they are, um, they, there's a little bit more empty space on your screen. So it's really a personal preference how you want this to look. It, it does come into play here a little bit more in just a second, I'll show you. So this is four cameras. It picks those four cameras out of the box by default, whatever, whatever method it chooses. Now there's no configuration buttons on the screen as you can see right now. To get that, you just tap the screen anywhere and you'll get these two little gray boxes in the top left corner. One's a wrench and one's three lines. We've already seen the wrench, that's the settings page. Clicking on the three lines there now takes you to choosing the camera and the camera order. Right now there's four cameras picked on here. Let's say I want to add two more cameras. Um, that's good. And then I hit the back button again, and now I have six cameras on here total. So I have six cameras with aspect ratio not ignored, and it hasn't placed on the screen like that. Uh, the doorbell camera is a little bit of a different type of camera, so you can see what it does with the, the image. If I tell it to ignore aspect ratio now, you'll see that it kind of fits everything into the nice little boxes. It might squish or stretch images just to make them fit on the screen. And depending on the screen you're on, it could be really wonky looking. So you may want to just keep the aspect ratio for your cameras so it uses that. Now, if I go back here and I choose five cameras, let me get rid of that one. And I go back. Now you'll see that if you choose, tell it to, to use the aspect ratio, not ignore it, then you'll get these nice little aspect correct images of your cameras. And they're again, they're updating once per second. You also see that there's two cameras on the bottom that are bigger. That's just because that's how it fits it on the screen. You wanna change the order of the cameras. Let's say I wanna make the driveway and front porch 
bigger because the bottom ones are bigger. I'm going to come over to the arrows on the right and I'm going to step those down to the bottom. So that's the driveway at the bottom. And actually, I don't want it to be below the front doorbell. Oops. I'm doing this without looking at it properly. Okay. So I have driveway on the bottom and front porches on the bottom already. So if I go back, my two main areas of focus are the front of the house. And you'll see that those two images are uh, bigger on the bottom because that's the way the system renders them when it puts them on here. You can see that you can choose the aspect ratio or not choose the aspect ratio. You can choose the cameras you want to display. And if I want to display all of them, then I, do the, I, I can do that. And you have small ones up top and big ones down at the bottom. Uh, and then I would probably put the doorbell uh, up out of the top three. So right there, and then come back and do it. I mean, you can mess around with it, right? However you want to lay your cameras out on the display. It's, it's designed to be super simple to use and no, no muss or fuss. Now, if I do this with the aspect ratio ignored, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it just makes them all into square boxes, except the top. You see now the top is very tall and skinny. That's what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't really like that view because everything is kind of squished and, you know, not normal. So I just leave the aspect ratio in play and then I do this. And I, I usually will remove one or two of those cameras. The doorbell's kind of wonky there. But anyway, that's, that's the view here. Now, like I said, it's one second per update. If you want to view something in real time, more real time, you just click the camera and it exp look at that. Love construction workers here. They are uh, driving that tractor down the street and it's uh, default to 100 milliseconds. So it's updating rather quickly. So if you choose a camera like this and, and you open it up, it'll default to 100 milliseconds. And it'll get back out of this view. When you touch it, you'll see the little grid up there, the little gray box. Just click that and you're back into your main view. And that's as simple as it is. So this is designed to be a simple to use live view of your cameras that you can run in Frigate. It took me all of what, 30 seconds to set it up? Very simple. Um, it's been super handy. I've been running it for about a week and I love it. It sits on this little tablet on my desk. So when I'm working or playing around at my, my desk here, I can see what's going on around me considering I'm in a room that has no windows. This is very helpful. And this sits on a little stand or I can, if I want to walk around with it or set it somewhere, it's on a battery. So it'll, it'll last as long as the battery is good. I also have it installed on my phone if I want to do it, uh, pull it up real quick. What I like about this is it's low power. I mean, it just runs, it comes up. I've noticed with the RTSP or the streaming cards or whatever, and some of the different um, applications, after a while they'll get out of sync or they'll, they'll fail or puts too much load on the server. This just runs. It comes in, I come in, it's running, it does its thing. It's like your traditional MVR when you have a bunch of cameras on the screen just sitting up there. That's exactly what this, this reminds me of. So I love it for that. I love it for simplicity. I love it for the ease of installation and configuration. And it doesn't have so many controls that you're fumbling with stuff for an hour just to try to get set up. Install it, choose your cameras, put them in the order that you want them in and let it go. And that's it. All right, that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, supporting me and subscribing and all the things that you do. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, that's it. We'll see you on the next video.